Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to cover the simple neural network in Jax and Flax. Hopefully this video will help the people who are trying to learn Jax, myself included. So let's jump right in. The idea is to design a neural network with a simple architecture that anybody can understand. Just to take the hassle of understanding the neural network and let's focus on Jax and Flax. So this is the neural network I'm trying to code in Jax. It's a, it's a very simple neural network with one hidden layer. We are feeding two dimensional data into, into the network and these two dimensions will be mapped into 10 neurons in the hidden layer. And these neurons will pre try to predict one of the two classes. So we got two input and two classes. To be honest with you, I hate this visualization of a neural network. I know it has been used for God knows how long and you cannot open any deep learning tutorial without finding this visualization. But let's agree. It is confusing. And when I teach this visualization to, new, to students and trying to get them understand the neural network, the first thing that they got confused is the input layer. They thought we are feeding two points to the network. And in fact, these are two dimensions. My personal preference is to think about it as matrix multiplication and matrix visualization rather than these just spaghetti of links. In the input layer, we are feeding a feature matrix of size 1000 by 2, 1000 points scattered in two dimensional space. In the hidden layer, we are performing matrix multiplication between the feature matrix and the weight of the hidden layer. So the weight is as of size 2 by 10, 10 neurons, each of which has two dimensions. So because the inner dimensions of these two, these two matrices agree, we are getting a result of 1000 by 10, which represents the, the neurons' responses to the feature matrix. An important aspect of the hidden layer is to apply nonlinearity. So the nonlinearity is applied to the whole matrix and it won't change the size of the matrix. The output of the hidden layer is the matrix of size 1000 by 10. These are the neuron responses. When we feed this matrix to the output layer and we multiply by the weights of the output layer, which is of size 10 by 2. And at the end, we're getting 1000 by 2. So if we apply softmax on that, it gives us the probability for each class. Is this point, point is one row in this matrix. Does it belong to the first class? This would give the first class higher probability or the second class, and this will give the second class higher probability. So this is my personal preference of visualizing a neural network as a matrix multiplication process. It just breaks down the process and it just removes all the confusion. Now let's look into the code. First, I would like to acknowledge the help of this uh, course from the University of Amsterdam. Uh, it was very helpful and I borrowed some code from that course, uh, GitHub repository. And also I looked into JAX advanced tutorials. I'm importing some libraries. Here you can see that I'm importing JAX. This is JAX, this is JAX.numpy, which every numpy function that you could think of is uh, in JAX. Here I'm setting the random seed and uh, setting the plots to dark background and I'm specifying the colors for the, the plotting the data set. I'm also specifying the batch size at the very top just to uh, make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm referring to the, the, to the right variable. Here's how we create our two dimensional data. We are doing that using a data set class from, da uh, from uh, data. And you might ask why I'm not doing the data set in just regular NumPy arrays. Jax is providing a very good feature. It, it, can, it can use data loaders from PyTorch. So PyTorch data loaders, they only accept data sets that are instances of the data set class. So we are packaging everything into a data set class. Then later we are splitting that into train test using PyTorch data loaders. And we are packaging that into a data loader just to do batch training. We are not, we are not feeding the whole thousand points to the model we are doing batch training just to make the code as reproducible as possible so i'm specifying the size and i'm specifying a random range and i'm calling make nested classes make nested classes actually calls the make blobs from scikit-learn and make circles from scikit-learn the make blobs function will create these two parts of the data set and make circles will create this part of the data set i'm moving that the make circles from the origin to the right and down here. Then I'm concatenating the two data sets into variables x and y and I'm packaging these x and y into data and labels and this would make our toy data set and we print the type of that toy data set we're getting this type so our data set is, has, the, has the correct type. 
Here I'm plotting the data set using a scatter from matplotlib. Note that I'm passing to the color option. I'm passing plot colors and the data set label. So what I'm trying to do here, the plot colors I defined at the very top to be cm.tab10.colors. So what is tab10? This is tab10. Color map from matplotlib. So the first color is blue, the second color is orange, then green, and all the way. So what I'm doing here in the color option, I'm indexing plot colors using the dataset label. So if a point if a point has a label zero, it will be it will be map, it will be mapped into blue, and if it has a, a label one, it will be mapped into orange, and this gives me the the colors of the of the of the points here. Here I'm splitting the data set into training and testing using random split. So I'm setting the train size to be 80% and uh, the test size would be 20%. And I'm feeding that full data set with the train size and test size. And I'm setting the generator, the torch generator to a random seed. And then I'm packaging the train split into a, da a train data loader and test split into test data loader. And I'm using data loader from torch.utilities just to package these data sets. So I'm feeding the train data set and the batch size I set it to 32 at the very top. And I'm setting shuffle to false because the, sh uh, the data is already shuffled in at the random split. Uh, the collate function is numpy collate. So what's collate function is doing? It takes a batch and it transforms it into numpy array. So the default option packages the, the points in the batch into torch tensor. Jacks in their tutorial, they said, just instead of instead of packaging the batch into a torch tensor, just package it in a numpy array, just to make it compatible with jacks and flax. Here we have data loader of batches, and the points in each batch are numpy array. And we did the same thing with the test loader. We said that the collate function to numpy, to numpy collate. And here I'm sitting, I'm plotting the train split and the test split, making two subplots, one row and two columns. And I'm enumerating the train data loader and I'm getting the sample and the label. Note here I'm not enumerating single points, I'm enumerating with the batches. So for each iteration, I'm not getting a single point, I'm getting 32 points because I'm setting the batch size to 32. Here I'm defining the architecture of the neural network we're going to use in the training. I'm calling the class MLP classifier, and it has three parameters, head layer, head and dimension, and number of classes. So here in our call function, we are defining a for loop, in case of we have one, more than one head layer, and, each, and uh, the head layer is dense layer, and then we're applying the relu on the output of the head and layer. The output layer maps the hidden dimension to the number of classes and it applies this lo lo the log softmax on that uh, matrix. So I'm defining the model to be MLP classifier with one hidden layer and 10 neurons for the hidden layer and the number of classes is two. And I'm printing the model that uh, this, sh this shows how the attributes for that MLP classifier. In this part, we are setting the optimizer to Optax Adam with a learning rate 0 0.01 and we are, initial, we are initializing the model using a random seed. The parameters will be random. Then we are using flax train state to create the model with the parameters and optimize. This function calculates the loss. It takes a model state, the parameters and batch. It splits the batch into points and labels and it, it gets the logits from the model. The prediction labels were just getting the maximum probability along the column dimension and we are encoding the labels into one hot encoding to compute the cross entropy. The cross entropy loss between the logits and the one hot label and we're getting the mean, and the mean of that. And the accuracy would be where the prediction labels agree with the labels and we're taking them into that and we're pretending the loss and the accuracy. This is a very important function for our training. Basically, this, this function defines our training by 
by computing the loss and trying to optimize for that loss. Let's test the first batch without training and see that our calculation of the loss is actually correct. We're getting the first batch from the train loader using next and we are feeding the model state and model parameters and the batch into the calculate loss function and we're getting a loss of 1.9 and accuracy of 0.31. So now let's try to do it ourselves. We're splitting the batch into points and labels and we're getting the logits from the model. And we're, to, and we're getting the prediction labels by taking the maximum probability by taking the maximum probability along the column dimension. And we're, try, and we're transforming the labels into one hot labels. So one hot labels basically this. This point is class one. This part is a class zero. And the, the third part is a class zero. And these are the logits. The, the output, the model output. And the cross entropy is 1.97. We compute the cross entropy using uh, using uh, Jack's NumPy. Just uh, by applying this function here. We're basically multiplying the labels by the logits. So the loss we computed using Jack's NumPy agrees with the loss that was provided that's provided with the with our function to compute the loss now let's check the accuracy one thing to check is just that the prediction labels is working as expected so the first that first point here the logits the maximum the maximum probability is the one on the right so it's class 1 not class 0 so the first point is a class one. Let's look at the second point. The second point is also class one. So we're trying to find which one is the maximum and we are indicating that, and we're indicating that in the prediction labels. The accuracy, basically, if these two agrees, it will check, it will add one. So we are computing the agreement between the labels and the prediction labels, and we're taking the mean of that, and this gives us Three point uh, three one, and this is the exact same thing we're getting from the from the computing lo so from the calculate loss function. So we're done with checking the calculate loss function. We know it's it's working as expected. Now let's train the model. This is a train step. Uh, this is Jack's JIT. It's just uh, just in time uh, compilation for efficiency to value and grad. And um, we're, we're passing our loss function and that argument and we are telling that that, fun that that function would retain the loss in addition to the accuracy. Then we're computing the, uh, the, the gradient and we are updating the parameters and retaining the model state, the loss, and the accuracy. The evaluation is, evaluation is basically we are calling the calculate loss function and we're discarding the loss and we're getting the accuracy. This function train model that takes a model state, a train loader, and number a number of epochs. So we are calling that function on the model state and a train loader and number of epochs is hundred. Then it will get for each epoch, it will get a batch from the data loader and it will call train step. And it will retain the state of the model. At the end, we are getting the trained model state. So the training starts with a 71% accuracy and it ends up with 100% accuracy on the training data. Testing the model, we are just looping over all batches in the test data loader and we're getting the batch accuracy. And we're determining the accuracy using weighted average because not all batches have the same size. And we're getting 0.99 Approximately, we are missing one or two points from the testing data set. Here, I'm plotting the train set and the test set. I'm, I'm plotting the culture first. Then I'm looping over the train loader to get the sample and the label. And I'm using scatter function to plot the points. And this is the, this is the final decision boundary of the trained model. And this point what makes our accuracy 99% is to have 100.
So it's far away from that decision boundary. So it got misclassified by the model. My final remarks of coding a neural network in JAX. I found JAX is more detailed. For example, in our code, we use three libraries, JAX, FLAX, and OPTAX. God, this sounds so weird. Anyway, going into more details is very, in my opinion, is very beneficial for unit develop. So it's more break, broke down more than PyTorch. PyTorch is, I think, handling so many hidden stuff for you, but this is not the case with JAX. Another thing I love about JAX is NumPy compatibility. I love NumPy, and I'm doing so many things with NumPy, especially indexing some function as easy as zeros like in NumPy. This is very useful for me, and I use it a lot in, in, in my code. So I found JAX is more natural to use with NumPy rather than transferring to a tensor because you have you have to transfer it to a torch tensor, then transfer it back to NumPy, and that you have to do that all over your code. So JAX compatibility with NumPy is just, I think it's biggest selling point. That's it guys for today's video. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe. By the way, you can find a link to the notebook I'm working on in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye.